Hi, hello, hey, and welcome back to Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by David Rushed Vibes Rushing. And we're here to vibe. What's up? Living the dream. What's going on with you? I'm just enjoying Rush Vibe Studio. Mm -hmm. What was this? 3.0? Two 2.75. 2.75. I'm going to give some mic, mic background noise. I'm we'll trying to, try we'll to get switch my, up. Trying to get my levels right, my positioning right. Um, to get your positioning right. Switch up the tempo a little bit. Wait, what? Hmm? What'd you say? Nothing. Whatever, man. Where's my phone? What did I do with my phone? Mm. I just had it. Oh, well, I you do don't know it? more. But I need it. For what? Um, I'm right here. You're not my phone. But if I, I'm I need right my here. Phone for, I need my phone for research purposes. Ah, uh, you got mine? No, I'm about to go get mine. I'll be right back. So, Hold it. Hold it. <laughs> I hope everyone's doing well today. Um, yeah, our EP just strolled on off to get his phone. So, oh, look. Who's chosen to return? And I brought the Google phone. Oh, the folder? The foldable. I call it a folder phone because that's essentially what it is. It's a folder. <laughs> but once Apple drops one, I'm going to get one. Yeah, me too. Um, How many more years do you think we got to wait before Apple finally jumps on? Man, I don't know. Probably like... They probably have to do a seance with Steve Jobs to get his permission. <laughs> I, feel, I, think, I feel like Apple does that before they do anything. I feel like we're well past considering what Steve Jobs would want as yeah. it pertains to... Uh, as it pertains to Apple. It was crazy. Salas was asking me who the creator of Apple was. And the name was not coming to me. I was like, it's not Tim Cook. I was trying so hard to remember. So then I asked Siri on my watch. And she was like, I'm sorry. I can't get this information for you right now. I was like, ooh, you're bad for that. But yeah. So this is like the third time I've had to say Steve Jobs this week. Because it came up in another conversation but uh -huh. yeah i think a work conversation but yeah cool so should, should we let people know why we're i don't think it's necessary in different space okay well that's why we were off last week and mm -hmm. i feel like we owe people an explanation as to why we were off no we don't because it was kind of abrupt we just came back from seven months off gave him two episodes three episodes three episodes oh it's even better and then dipped for a week. Just one week. Y'all are okay. Life yeah. went on. It did go on. Lots of stuff happened. A lot of stuff did happen. Here and in, in the world. In, here and in the world. Here and in the world. Um, Where do we begin? Your girl. Did you say she got uh, charged with a... She got charged with a couple of misdemeanors. Carly, Carly Russell. Carly. So, for everyone who's um, not aware... Right, as I'm sure everybody's. Although uh, people for people kind of forgot about this really, really that quickly. That news cycle ended quick. Yeah. Sorry to that girl. Yeah, um, Carly Russell and who were Alabama <laughs> admitted that she made up her. Oh, she actually admitted. Yeah, it did not. It did not happen. At all. There was no toddler. She was not abducted. There were no nude pictures. Yeah, there were no nude pictures. I think. At the last I cared about this, the police were still trying to figure out, account for the 49 hours that she was, quote unquote, missing. Oh. Oh, I guess it's still part of the investigation. But I guess that's up for the prosecutor to determine at this point. Huh. I think her max jail time is like, maybe like a year or something like that, because they're misdemeanors. I mean, so, she wanted to get away. She certainly going to get away. She about to go away for Upstate, real. Downstate. I don't know how Alabama works out of state for real well sorry to that woman i hope um i hope at the end of this she gets what she 
needed. Or needs. Needs. Lots yeah. of support. Um, there was something else that happened that I was like, oh, we got to bring it up on the pod. Uh, your girl. Cardi. Yes. Out here. Taking so we're not, doing, we're not doing any pleasantries. We're just going to jump straight into the, the I topics. Mean, what, what do you, what do you, what pleasantries do you want to do? Mm, Sometimes one. it's about just getting right to it. I know. Oh, you trust me. I, I know you know. I, I know how to get right to it. Trust and believe. Mm. Anywho. Uh, no, I mean, you just trying to figure out, you know, what's been good with you. What has been good with me? I've been you, working. You look good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I think I'm finally catching up on sleep again. It's been a rough couple months. Work has been busy. So busy that I haven't even been able, I haven't been to the gym in like two months. Mm. I've not had a personal training session. Mm. I know I'm like already ready for the what I'm going to hear back from my personal trainer. I'm like, I do you still, still have, Do you still have a trainer? I do still have a trainer. It's a matter of if a trainer still has me. Huh. Um, but yeah, it's been busy. We, we launched a new system for a client that has been a year in the building. Um, so like if I actually take you're the time, in the making. huh? You're in the making. No, cause we were building it. You were building it. Yes. You built it. Yeah. I was like, you had a hand in building it. I was like the supervisor with the hard hat that really like that had the checklist that doesn't do anything and a pencil, like a sharp project pencil. manager. Yeah, I, I really was. Um, cause I had to see from it's one system that has to do work for different people in different capacities. So I had mm. to be able to essentially be a translator and speak these people's languages and make sure that I tell the people who are going to tell the developers how the system needs to function. So it was like, if I take the time to actually like update my resume and really put, cause you know, people, you have your resume, but you don't actually always put every aspect of your job. If I really did that, like I'm low key a software developer. I mean, I can't do okay. the code. I can't do the code stuff. But like in terms of like the functionality and being able to speak to systems, um, yeah, I was I was in there. I was part of that. So, but it's been hectic because I've also been training our client, our distributor partners, our field team. Like I am, I somehow became. I've I've done trainings in the past. I've been a corporate trainer, um, but I've like officially become a trainer in my department like there's nobody else it's just me and i'm regularly i feel like a professor posting office hours and just doing training sometimes one person shows up sometimes 30 people show up but um yeah. that's that's it i've just been in this system and it's just been fire drill after fire drill and anytime i step away from my computer i come back to 511 emails um I'm just gonna keep going like nothing's happening over there. Uh, like David's new set, new losing set, his new set, life. New set of struggles. Um, but yeah, so I just other than that, um, my friend, you good? Man, I don't know. I miss the I miss the arms. The arms were. I didn't like the arms. You didn't like the arms? Oh man. I actually I prefer this. Really? I do. I like the arms because you can, you can kind of maneuver them. These no. you kind of have to fix them in the place and hope that the mic picks up wherever your mouth is. Mm, I think my mouth's in the right spot, but um, yeah, that's been that's been work. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm, I'm drinking an espresso martini, so we'll blame it on. Oh, is that what that is? Mm -hmm. uh, so you're gonna be up? No, because I had that Red Bull and gin yesterday, and I came home and passed out. No, you had a double gin with like this much Red Bull in it. So, okay. All right. You had so enough Red Bull in it to tint the drink. I <laughs> went to the bar to order a drink because David and I went to a uh, Placencia cigar event uh, at Tailored Smoke. Holla at Tailored Smoke. Shout out to Taylor, Tasha. Tailored Smoke. That's what I said. Tailored Smoke. Something you said Taylor. No, I said Tailored. Okay. Sorry. Tell me what I said. Keep going. Um, I can enunciate. Um, shout out to Tasha for the invite. So we get there. I order a drink. 
David had to work out today, so he didn't get a drink. I got a drink. Um, while I'm at the bar, there's a sign that says, if you order a double, the second shot is half off. And in my mind, that just made perfect sense. Mm. So I said, I'll take a double Tanqueray and Blueberry Red Bull. Mm. And... The bartender gave me a glass that was this big. So when he poured the double, there was only space for like quarter of an ounce of Red Bull. Yeah. So sweet as he was, he he kept my Red Bull in a separate for like I don't know why he didn't just give me the can, and I don't know mm-hmm. why I didn't ask for the can. I don't know why. I was either. just expecting him to give me the can. Um, so I would have to. I'd have to like drink through this these layers of just gin and Red Bull, go back, have him top it off with more Red Bull, drink some more, have yeah. him top it off. Whereas if he had just given me a bigger glass, he probably could have fit half the can. Um, but yeah, leg- and that's marketing. That's marketing and advertising. Because I looked at that sign and I was really like, huh, let me just do this because if I get a second drink, I'm going to wish I had just gotten the double to begin with. So I did that. Um, and I did not get a second drink. So uh, it worked. But um, where was I going with this? I have no idea. Oh, yeah. The point I was making was the fact that I had the Red Bull at mm. like 7 o'clock at night and still came home and went to sleep. Um, I mean, there were other factors that helped me go to sleep, but... I had Red Bull and went to sleep. Yeah. And now I'm having an espresso martini. Yeah. The uh, the event was cool. The first actual, for, for those who follow me, obviously know I'm pretty into cigars, but that's actually like, like my first cigar, quote unquote, event at a cigar lounge. So um, got a couple, mm-hmm. a couple boxes of cigars. Got a nice <laughs> fancy new lighter I'm really excited about because um, it doubles as like a weapon. It's because of the weight. It's got a good weight if you need to chuck it at somebody. <laughs> uh, most importantly, it was just nice to be out mm-hmm. on a uh, on a Wednesday night. Got to meet Tasha and, and her her husband, albeit um, briefly, because uh, it was just loud and I didn't really want to try to do like cross talk uh, cross from where we were where mm-hmm. we were sitting. But it was cool. It was a vibe, and um, look forward to doing more. I think. I'll try to hit the next one that uh, that Vintage does, the c- cigar lounge that I that I frequent here in the city. But yeah, it was a it was a good night. Mm-hmm. Very good, and here we are, recording. Recording on a Thursday night. On a Thursday night. We're back, night. baby. Um, we were supposed to record yesterday, but we were like, nah. Did not have it. Two cigars. And that was part of why I got the Red Bull because I was like, oh, oh we're, we're gonna, gonna record. Go home and record, so let yeah. me stay awake. <laughs> But you didn't fight me. I came home. I was like, you know, let's do it tomorrow. And you're like, okay. Cool. <laughs> so, um, did you uh, did you see the news about your boy? Who? Your boy. <laughs> you heard about your boy got a uh, went for the three peat. Look, he I, got indicted for the third time, right? He did. Yeah. I mean, what did Bush say? Fool me, fool me, <laughs> <laughs> Shame on you. Fool me, fool me twice. You, you fool me. You can't get fooled. <laughs> um, oh, that man was a disaster. But now, he was, he was, a, he was a treasure. Michelle's best friend. Um, he was a treasure. And you know what's interesting? Before we we get into this, um, <laughs> Bush was like. There's the thing is like Bushisms, right? Mm-hmm. Like all the the just the gaffes and 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 quirky things that he did. But man did a lot of harm to the oh, country. Yeah. Uh, like no child left behind. Like the, the people on Twitter. Anytime somebody says like a dumb tweet, somebody <laughs> retweets it with the picture of Bush. Like he, he'll pay for his crimes against humanity. But because of Trump, people are like, oh, Bush wasn't that bad. And it's such recency bias, and okay. and people really. I feel like just because Trump is so Trump and there's so much media around him and Bush was like, how many years ago at this point? I think people don't really realize 
reckless. He kind of was. He was definitely reckless. And was the president who drove us into the Great Recession. He was he was at the helm when we went into the recession. Had that a, Obama that Obama came in and had a sling in wars like like it was a card game. So, um, so yeah, I just and I remember because I made a Facebook post and I was like because somebody had posited like, um, who would would you you know do you appreciate Bush more or something like would you rather have Bush? This is during Trump's first and only term, um, or or former years of Bush. And I was like, why is this even a question? Should and be. I had a, like, I even had a, a cousin who you, you hang out with um, from time to time was like, I would actually prefer to have Bush over Trump. I'm like, what? But um, it's interesting. But yeah, got indicted again. Yeah, I have heard. How many, I, think it was, I heard it was like 56 counts. I haven't heard. I haven't heard the updates. I know. You had it on the TV all day. Like I came in and it was on the TV. When? Where was I? I mean, you weren't here, but you had, <laughs> you had left. I'm assuming it had been running. No, it came on after. Oh. Because I was watching GMA3, and then I left. I had my meeting at 2, and then I left to go donate the clothes, and then we're going to get some cheesecake. What? You didn't say nothing to me about getting on cheesecake. You said you were dropping clothes off. You I were did. donating clothes, and you are going to pick a daughter up. Yeah. But I thought it was odd when I checked your location and I saw where you were I was like hmm I wonder why she's coming that way but now I know why are you checking Where's my the cheesecake? location in the fridge where else was the cheesecake I'm about to have some after we finish recording I got cheesecake you didn't see Sonoma chomping down on that chocolate cake I got them a slice of chocolate yeah, cake I just wanted them to go to bed um, they were chilling um, but yeah I didn't I haven't heard any of the updates I wasn't listening to NPR because I was in the car and I haven't been in the car you have not been in the car to drive in driving, the middle of the driving day farther without than, kids in the car. So yeah. I listened to Demetria. I haven't listened to an episode since like March. So your best friend, my girl, she's in London. Um, What's she doing there? She's gallivanting. Oh, she thought she moved to Ghana. She did. She moved to Ghana. Then she moved to South Africa and now she's doing her. So she doesn't live in Ghana anymore? No, she did Ghana for six months. <laughs> oh, was this intentional? Like, yeah. She I mean, she to... still plans on like building a place there. Like I think buying like a town home or something. Yeah. But yeah, she did Ghana for like six months. So she's, I guess what they call a digital nomad. She's just kind of. Yeah. Um, and she was there. actually talking about that in her episode where people are like, so what do you do? And she was like, I work. And they're like, how do you afford to live in abroad? And she was like, the podcast. Like I have commercials. I have. She's like, that's my work. So podcast is her work. Yeah, I mean, she does. She'll write. She does writers' room. Well, she was doing writers' rooms before um, all the writers' issues. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> the writers, the writers um, have the issue. They do have the issue. They have the mm. issue with their payment. Mm. So right the writers' issues. I mean, it, quite I'm a sure that's an interesting are, way of putting it. There are lots of people in history who wish they could have just gone on strike and gotten. It's it's a. I good mean, you might even go on strike if they got a union. <laughs> Slaves didn't have a union. Well, okay, obviously not. <laughs> that's what I'm saying I meant more modern Any, mo in modern times. Anybody anyway, can go um, but yeah, she um, she does writers' rooms here and there. Um, for different movies and TV shows and stuff. Yeah. So, um, but the up. podcast is her, is her, I believe that's her bread and butter. And I mean, she's a single female, single black female, like no kids. She, God bless her. She, yeah, she can afford to say, I'm going to live here for six months. I'm going to go Speaking live here. Speaking of kids, um, how do you feel about the. <laughs> <laughs> not actually that's well actually kind of speaking of kids um i know we haven't seen it neither of us have seen it but it's doing numbers okay it's about to do like avengers numbers are you talking about barbie how do you feel about all of the hubbub that's going on around this pg-13 movie I based mean, on a doll i mean i want to see it but yeah. not in the I don't know that I want to make the effort to go see it in theaters because isn't it interesting how much of a task it is? Mm -hmm. Maybe not even just as a theater, just to go anywhere. It like is. outside of work, outside of taking the kids to daycare or school, because 
you know, you have to do that, mm-hmm. right? Because we sign them up for these things. Um, and, and outside of work, because I, I have to go out um, from time to time and, uh, and, and work outside the house. I think we were talking about this. I was talking to you about this the other day. Like, I just find it in a post-pandemic world, it takes a lot for me to get up and go mm-hmm. somewhere. Yeah. I have said that I'm going to go to the grocery store. Like, when was the last time you went grocery? You, have you been grocery shopping? Like, seriously grocery shopping since 2020? 2019? Where I did it myself? I don't know. I don't think you have. I do Walmart grocery. Yeah, you do You do pickup orders. Every and Like, I still haven't been able to talk myself to go to Trader Joe's. Like, I'm waiting for us to run out of shower or soap. And then I'll go buy our peppermint. Yeah, but that's not really like grocery shopping. Yeah, that's like intentional Like you shopping. haven't grocery shopped. No, I haven't. And I haven't. I'll run in. I'll pick up some yeah, things. I was, was going to say, I've done that at but, Harris Teeter here. Like, but like. Actual like fill up the back, the trunk the, of the car. Yeah, with bags. fill up the, the buggy. No, I have not. Isn't that crazy? But it's just like you realize, I think you realize that time is very economical. Like no, it, I thought you were going to say valuable. I mean, it's that too, but like Mm. it comes down to economics where it's just, you know, to go see a movie in theater, what are the factors I need to calculate? I likely can't see it during the business day. Because you got to work. Because I got to work. So that leaves after 5 p.m. And usually I'm still working at 5 p.m. Still working. So that leaves me. You're technically working right now. Technically. (laughs) So... You know, after 6 p.m., Monday through Thursday, or Monday, yeah, Monday through Thursday. But then, now I have to calculate, is who's going to keep, take? are you coming with me? If you're coming with me, now we have to reallocate Shay and figure out. Mm, you got name drop. We've name dropped her many times. Yeah, name dropped Shay. Um, Drush- our, our nanny. Drush- um I called her that the other day. her by her full I called her that the other day. I was like, Drush- <laughs> <laughs> Did she look at you like you were crazy? She said you were sweet. She's like, yes. I was like, I'm just call you that randomly. She's to say Trisha. Yo, I wish I could have seen her face when you were like, has your nose always been pierced? And she was well, like, it was, you know, and it was crazy because was like, for so years. for context, um, we have a nanny. Her name is Shay, and she was standing. She's I was, more of a household manager. She, she really is a household manager. Old, she order. really does. She's so valuable. Uh, she's actually invaluable. I was sitting on the couch and she was standing behind me in the hallway and I so I had a, a upward vantage point. So I actually got scared because I she had apparently she has her nose pierced. I had never noticed it before. But Every I, day. I saw something in her nose. So I assumed it wasn't a nose piercing, but I got scared after I asked her because if she didn't, that would have meant I called her out for having a boogie in her nose. <laughs> so I was like is your nose pierced? And I was like, oh my God, please say yes. And she was like, yeah, only for the past 10 years. I was like, oh, to, you know, I don't, I'm one, I'm not, I'm not studying your face like that because you're not my wife. So, um, you should look but then, you. but then I was like, well, I compliment your, you know, I notice your hair when you come in because every few weeks you'll come in with a different hairstyle. I noticed the hair, but, um, yeah. So luckily she, she, her nose was pierced, but I asked if she did like the little, little horse ring thing and she was like nah she her, said, her grandpa said this for cows it's for cows yeah. I was, I was, and she said no her papa papa yeah papa said it's for papa cows. has a farm uh, a cow farm um a country <laughs> country <laughs> bumpkin um, papa but how you, a grown woman? Me, how you be a grown woman calling your grandfather papa come on man i mean doesn't your nephew call your dad absolutely what do they call him people Papa, right? No, they call him something else. Something more like Caucasian. <laughs> um, I feel like it's pa- I feel like it's Is it? It's Papa. I'm trying to I can like hear Noah's voice, but I can't hear the word. I might just, <laughs> just call them <laughs> Okay, we're gonna move because on. Because I feel like there are there are like black terms that we use when reference granted our kids made up their own like solace made up her own name solace for her made it up and everybody is stuck with everybody um, solace so said mama, mama, mama and popa. popa so now everybody all of our kids because our kids i just didn't encourage our kids to call because they call gr- the um your mom mimi 
No, they call her grandma. No, our kids call them grandma. Oh. But um my nephews. Yeah, they call They call her mom. Mimi, yeah, they call her Mimi. Which is very <laughs> It's very Caucasian, in my opinion. Um, it's racist. Is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> or stereotyping. It's like me stereotyping. Uh, 20- oh, maybe they do call him Papa. It's Papa. Yeah. Mimi and Papa. Mimi and Papa. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. It is. Um. But yeah, Shay has her nose pierced. I'm thinking about getting my nose pierced, but I also. Mary, you were saying this for like. Because at 33, <laughs> five, I'm it was like five still, years. It's not happening. I'm still. One, the pain of it. And two, I don't want to have to deal with my parents. More so my dad. Are they getting ready to move? I, I know. That's what I'm waiting for. Right, I'm waiting right. for them to move. And then I'm going to get it and I don't have to Wait, hear about it. So you're 30. Yes, I'm 33 you're and I'm, Jesus, still, Jesus year, I'm right? still concerned about yeah. my parents' opinion. Yeah, you've got. You're old enough to have had two mortgages in your lifetime. Mm-hmm. Um, three children. Three I pay children. taxes. Pay taxes. Career woman. Career woman. And I. You're scared to get your nose pierced. I'm not scared. No, you're scared. I just don't want to deal with the feedback. It's okay. You're scared. Anyway, how did we. You segued us. We were talking. Barbie. How do you feel about the. Oh, yeah. Um, And disclaimer, right? Like, maybe we shouldn't even be talking about this because neither of us have seen it. But. I wasn't. I didn't initially. The only reason why I initially cared was because of Issa. Issa Rae is in the movie, yes. Yeah, Issa. Um, so I was going to go see it for her. She's so going to root for everybody black in the movie. I was going to root for Issa. Who's everybody, probably everybody black in the movie. Like, she's <laughs> likely everybody black. Um, so I was going to go see it for Issa because it's like, oh, I got to support my girl Issa. Because um, y'all go back, right? So far back. You know, she's half African, right? You got to admit, we kind of resemble each other. Uh, continue you see it um so i was i was never going to go to the theater to see it there are very few movies i go and if i do go it's a preview like i feel like the only time we've seen movies in the last we've seen like three movies we've seen avatar we've seen the flash i feel like we saw something else black panther black panther all previews i ain't dropping no money to see no movies um other than the movie at the money at the concessions that part uh which I'm supporting local so I wasn't motivated because I was like this is a movie about a doll that I didn't really relate to I had Barbies but I didn't really relate to her right. uh, but again was wanted to support Issa in my head as soon as I saw the commercial I knew I wasn't going to go see it I just knew I'd stream it eventually um, I did have half a thought to just buy a ticket for the purposes of buying a ticket but not actually going to the theater but then I was like no nah. that's um, necessary we're like knocking on a recession. I can't just be giving money away. Right. So, but between it was the advertising and, and me being a marketer, I really appreciated the efforts they went through to advertise this movie. It was even advertise it with uh, Oppenheimer. Yes, I w- like. I want to go work for the marketing agency that handled all of Barbie or the marketing department because they had so much creative liberty and that is how marketing is supposed to be. And then pairing it with Oppenheimer. So it's like you go from, I don't know what order they're, they're pairing it. If it's like, you're supposed to see Barbie first, then Oppenheimer or other way around. Um, I have, I want to see Oppenheimer. I don't have any, I don't know that I care about Oppenheimer. Only affiliation I have is back in the day that used to be a commercial about Oppenheimer funds. And that's the only thing I knew about Oppenheimer. Didn't realize he had this significance, but it's like, once you hear the NPR breakdown, it's like, Oh, well I know what the movie's about. Japanese are pissed. Um, they're not even showing the movie in Japan. Like they said, nah, don't bring that here. Uh, All wounds. But I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait for Barbie. And I say I'm going to wait for Barbie to come stream. But there are so many things that I've said I'm going to wait to come on stream. And they've, they're have they available to stream. And I still haven't watched it. So, no, I'm not going to go to the theater. But I've heard amazing things. And the more and more people I see watching it and sharing posts about it, I'm like, oh, maybe it would be worth going to see. But I'm not going to because so the you know- logistics of it is too much work. So, you know, there's a saying out there. I'm gonna break my one. I'm gonna break my rule that we have on this podcast. 
that I have in life. I don't have a lot of rules in life. Mm-hmm. Uh, but one is don't say the W word. But apparently there's a saying. And when you go woke, you go broke. But I guess the exception would be Barbie because that joint's about to hit a Billy at the box office. We need Lil Wayne to drop a remix. A cool Billy. A Billy, a Billy. A so like I said, it's only about to do some av- like Avatar Avengers numbers mm-hmm. at the box I'm office. The you ain't got just for no inflation. It's a Billy. It's a cool Billy. Um, so there might be some holes in that theory. You go woke, you go broke. Because ain't nobody who put their hands on making Barbie is broke That's at this true. point. And I know people are seeing it twice. I believe Bethany said she went. They went and saw it twice. Um, you gotta drop Bethany's name on the podcast. But if anyone's name needs to be dropped in the <laughs> podcast, it's Bethany. Shout out to to the bees. The B dubs. B dubs um, with. <laughs> I feel like we probably shouldn't go here. I'm I'm gonna go down the alley though. But they are their their family is so fascinating. But it bothers me that I still. At any given point in my life, come across a Wilkinson and not know it. Mm-hmm. One of their kids. There are. Like I feel like I, I've met all of them. I don't think I've met all of them. Yeah, maybe I, I haven't. I think, I think, I think I've like maybe two in the middle. Yeah. But I will say they're. But, all, but I'm sure all of them are great because all the ones I've met are yeah. fantastic. Those two make amazing people. They like they if do. you needed to like select people who should procreate yeah. it's them well and they've <laughs> they make sorry. amazing i'm, I'm, not, I'm not, not doing I'm, this I'm, with you. I'm sorry they make amazing people yes. i yes, got to spend have. some quality time with their youngest son i think he's the youngest son yeah see but you don't I'm know assuming, i'm assuming <laughs> you don't know y'all don't come i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> Bethany and Bobby. I'm sorry. it's liable to be another <laughs> one that you just haven't met yet um, anyway i got to spend time with him for the because it's always their youngest daughter because right. she's the same age as Sala. So I, I right. know her pretty well. Um, but I got to spend time with one of the, and their oldest daughter. I've spent time with her as well. Right. But they're, that, their youngest son, one, all of their children are beautiful. They've got they great genes. Um, but they're young. He, he was just so sweet and just so, he's so good with, with yeah. the kids. And I mean, he was just such a little gentleman. Like when I went to, when we went to the birthday party, he gave me a hug and he was like, I see you on your roller skates. Like he was just like, you know, there are some kids that you just enjoy being around. There are some kids you're like, I can't stand another minute with you. Yeah. I feel like all of their kids are just so personable so fun to spend time with so they are, absolutely so, i um uh bobby and i have have become closer uh in, in the last few months uh mainly because they're like you said they're just fantastic people and they he's, really he's, are. he's helped he and bethany have, have both helped us out in humongous ways in the last couple of years three years um but bobby and i obviously we play basketball together but um he had he had Bobby had been helping us with something we were we were doing here here recently, um, and I needed I needed his help one last time. I needed to move something big, and uh, he was busy because you know he has a life outside of helping mm-hmm. me. <laughs> and he's, but he said one of his kids would would come help, and I don't think I had. I think he I think this son it was Caleb. Sorry for name dropping minors on on the podcast, but um, I think he had. Paint was one of the ones who came and painted um, Rush Five Studios 2.0. But he said, uh, Caleb can come help you with this truck. So I was like, cool. So I went to meet him. And um, was just, he was talking to me like like we've known each other his whole life. Mm-hmm. I'm twice his age, more than likely twice his age, mm-hmm. which is scary to think about that I'm twice as old as some people. But um, he was just talking to me like I'm just Dave from around the way. Look, they are. <laughs> but it was scary because... You were talking back he, like it was. <laughs> I was number one. I, I, we were just we were just kicking it, but I I could have sworn like if I had closed my eyes, I would have thought I was talking to Bobby. Mm-hmm. Like he's a splitting image of his father, and mm-hmm. I was just like, and I texted Bobby. I was like, yo, I felt like I just spent the last twenty minutes with you, except younger with more hair. Like yeah, and their oldest 
he changed my Chick-fil-A experience forever. Like I, yeah. he happened to be working there. This is when he was younger, maybe like four years ago. And I think I was ordering like four, three chocolate chip cookies. And he was like, you know, I mean, he just was so smooth with it at the drive through. He was like, you know, we sell half a dozen. And I was like, yeah. well, I'm not going to eat them all you in, get three, in one why, sitting. You get three, he was like, I just get, get three more. You can pop it in the microwave for about 30 <laughs> seconds. And it'll be like, you'll have a new experience. And I was like, okay. And I remember coming home and texting back. I was like, your son just upsold me some cookies. Yeah. He made some old white Christian man some extra money. He did. Yeah. They're, they're, they, they're great people. They're, they've made great people. And it's like how how do you strike gold yeah and it's funny because like like any other parent right like and the, and the wilkinsons are they're, they're pretty transparent although I, I think there there's an element of privacy to mm-hmm. to as, as i think everybody should um but it's i think it's it's natural as parents to always wonder like are we are we doing it mm-hmm. are we doing it right is, like is this the thing that we gonna- mess up do we did we misstep here? Like, is this one one that we want to put out and <laughs> out into the world by themselves? But, and then I know that it's just inherent as a parent to have those those thoughts. But, like, their kids are just Ama- fantastic. Like, people. they could any one of their kids could ask me for any kind of recommendation, and I, w- I would write it without even probably not even knowing their name. I'd be like, "What's your name again?" But okay, and then I'd write it like. Their kids are just mm-hmm. just perfect. Not yeah. not perfect, but they're they they're are great. they're they are fantastic. Yeah. Um, and as a parent with kids, you also have to be very mindful of the kids you let your kids be around. Yeah. And they have kids that, like I, Solace is at a very impressionable age. I have no concern about mm-hmm. the type of influence because I know that they're going to be great influences on them. Right. Which is something that like I've recently had to talk to Solace about because. I'm recognizing that Solace is in this stage where she's still always the baby of her group Mm. and she's surrounded by older kids. Her cousins are older, her friends are older, her classmates. So it's very tricky because she was telling, she told Shay something that one of someone she's very, she spends a lot of time with does and says, and Shay, Shay was like, I didn't want to say it in front of her because I still want her to be able to confide in me, which I appreciate because yes, we're transparent parents. We try to, you know, keep open communication. But I think when you're a kid, it's always nice to be able to have a trusted adult. That's not your parent. You could go to and being able to have that person who can come to us and let us know. So she was telling me this person, um, says and does things that I wouldn't personally want my child to be saying and doing, but this person's in my child's life. And so there's this fine line of, uh, uh, I had a moment where I realized like, my child's seven, but most of her peers are nine. Most of the people she's spending a majority of her time with are nine, and their parents are raising them differently. You know, we, I wouldn't say that our kids are sheltered, but I also wouldn't say we go out of our way to expose them to certain type of music or language and all of that. Except Hamilton. Huh? Except Hamilton. It kills me that we've outgrown it. It hurts. No. Hamilton was horrible because we we had our little four-year-old over here. How does a bastard? (laughs) 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 Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I mean, but a bastard's a real thing, though. Son it's like of a whore and a scot, <laughs> like she was going. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's something that that's it's true. like you have to think about, and and who, and I'm really struggling with like there are people that are in our kids' life because their their parents are in our life, so their kids are in our kids' lives, but those kids are in different households and yeah. they're allowed to be exposed to things that we agree are we don't want our kid to be exposed to now not that we're trying to hide anything from but it's like our definition of age appropriate differs from other people's definition of age appropriate so that can be really tricky in terms of trying not to seem like we're not allowing her to do 
the things that her peers are doing, but rec- but and trying to get her to understand that well, we're not letting you do this because you know this person is a, a year and a half, two years older than you, mm-hmm. so they may or may not be more mature and ready and seasoned. Like she was listening to a music video and I try to be real as much as I would like them to go somewhere else when they're watching YouTube and stuff like that or YouTube kids. I feel like we recognize it's really important that we need to be in earshot because we need to hear what they're listening to. And one of the songs she was playing on the TV had this line and it was, you're not you're not happy but you don't want to be dead like you don't want to be here but you don't want to be dead and i was like i don't think i like and she was on facetime with someone who was listening to it with her and that person was fine with it their family's fine with it but i was just like i don't want you listening to this because this isn't you know something i want a seed planted in your head i don't want you to you know deal with that because you're still a kid so um i say all that to say it's nice to know that the people know that we have these friends who have these who are amazing people within themselves who have raised these amazing people that when our children are with them and don't get me wrong i know kids are kids are going to be kids and kids are going to get into things and they're exposed to things i'm not you know putting our child on a pedestal or their children on a pedestal i'm just recognizing that you know for the most part you know that if your your kids are around these kids they're around good kids and that's really right. reassuring yeah um they should probably write a book should a couple of things though one off camera i need to know <laughs> what was said you better go to drache uh, as soon as she walked in the door <laughs> she's not even gonna, she's not even gonna lock the door behind her and be like so she's probably Shay. gonna need your help to open the door yeah um because i was i was un- i'm unaware of whatever yeah, comment she- this is Nobody told me. You weren't home. Or maybe you were outside smoking a cigar. Likely. But y'all still could have told me. You could have told me. I am. No. You, I mean, you will. But you haven't. Um, but yeah, shout out to the Wilkinsons. So. <clears throat> speaking of kids. You keep speaking of kids. And, uh, you know, we listen to a lot of kids, but. Yo. Against our will. Against my will. I don't mind kids, Bob. You know, what's funny is, is kids, Bob, will sneak up on you because, like, you play it begrudgingly in the car. And then you drop the kid off. And, and you drop the kid off and you're still listening to <laughs> it. And you and you just realize you're at a stoplight and you go, and you're going like this. And you're like, wait I a got minute. My head out of sun, and you know what's crazy is I'll hear, a, I'll hear a song for the first time on Kids Bop, and then I'll go download, like, the original but song. It's, it's not good. trash. It's not good. Complete trash. Kids Bop will ruin you for a song. Like, how is the Kids Bop version so it's, much better than a, the original? It's a vibe. It's not supposed to be this it way. It is a vibe. With so, some of these songs, the beat drop in Kids Bop goes harder. So I'll be on, um, speaking of kids and Kids Bop, uh, one of the girls, I would say favorite songs, that uh, anytime it comes on, they, they'll be like, yo, daddy, turn that up. It's, uh, it's about that time. <laughs> Which, if, uh, you know, the actual song, an actual artist, is none other than Lizzo. It's Kids Bop O'Clock. Uh, kids Bop yeah, kids O'Clock. Um, Lizzo, obviously known for uh, being wildly popular. Mm-hmm. Repping it for the big girls. Uh, and also wildly talented. She is. She can play a flute um, in a song. And, and really big for preaching uh, and, and pushing, promoting body positivity. Mm-hmm. She went to a Lakers game in a song. And, and funny, because I think we talked about this on season one of Rush Vibes. We might have. I think we touched it on it. And I did not know who Lizzo was until she was at the Lakers game because all the all the the following day, all of the talk on social media was about the outfit that she wore. Mm-hmm. You know, I think she and Kiki Palmer wore the same outfit. Different sizes, but the same outfit. Yeah, I don't really remember, but it's possible. 
It, it was a very. It was very. Up. Um, some would say revealing outfit, uh, and that's how I. Like I probably had heard one of her songs before, but I didn't know who it was. It was mm-hmm. Just a bop to me. It took me a minute to. But I didn't realize it was her. Um. So it's someone who's been you know in headlines, for you know she was playing the flute <laughs> from that was what was it the Library of Congress? Um, it's had feuds, you know, because Ari we Spears actually discussed Lizzo a lot on the show. Ari Spears, you know, referred to her as a poop emoji. And uh, the Lizzo fans went after him. <laughs> so, some would say rightfully so. Uh, it's just the audacity to call to say somebody look. You gotta have some some audacity to say somebody look like a poop emoji. But that's such an insult too. It it really is, and it's not vulgar. Like with your poop emoji so, looking. So, it is so disrespectful. I'm like, surprised that term didn't trend. Just like, a bro, little how bit you gonna call somebody? Say and somebody they were like, like, a, people like were a poop like, look emoji. At you. And Ari Spears is not he's slender been, by he's any been means. Through it. By any means, um, neither here nor there. Whatever happened with that like awkward kid conspiracy thing that he did? Oh, it, I, it, the news cycle. I think it kind of. But well, it was funny because uh, one, it was back. one, it was old. It was an old thing that uh, that people dug up, and and Tiffany Haddish was involved, mm-hmm. and it just kind of frizzed away. I, I don't want to say it blew over, but it didn't really. It didn't really. It didn't have a lot of staying power. <laughs> Very uncomfortable though, because mm-hmm. I, I I did watch it and I was like, "Bro, who signed off on this? Like, I don't care if this was five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty years ago. Like, this is not. <laughs> this is there's nothing funny about this. But anyways, um, is in the news. Lizzo is in the news. Lizzo is in the news. And is being sued. I believe by is it three or four? Two or three former um, dancers on uh, for you backup know, dancers, yeah, backup dancers. Um, and I think two saying were that they were from her reality show. Saying that they were body shamed, um, most notably of of the of the allegations that they were body shamed, which would be surprising. Right, but in what way were they body shamed? Like body shamed for being too, like to be for being skinny, for being like, because body shaming can go both ways. I, don't I think, saw a glimpse I, of them. I don't think it matters. One, because if you're, you're preaching right. body positivity, it does whatever your body is, whatever shape, whatever construction your body is, you should be proud of it. True. So I don't know that it's relative whether they were being chastised for being big or whether they were being made fun of because they were thin. I think it's it's all kind of in the same pot. Um, but what's interesting is that um, people who are no longer part of Lizzo's back, you know, her, her camp, um, I think a former, I can't remember what her name was, somebody I think maybe who worked on her show came out and said that, you know, Mm, they too toxic. Yeah, experience toxicity working uh, with and, and for Lizzo. So I don't know who she upset, but apparently the order's been sent down. Mm. Somebody's trying to get Lizzo up out of here. Which is interesting. Mm. Um, mm. She, of course, uh, she was silent for a couple of days. Mm. As I pull up, oh shit! As I pull up the uh, Google phone, the, the green, the green bubble phone, um, she released a statement via Instagram, which is so interesting. Like official statements being released yo, via Instagram. My my father is seventy six. Was born in nineteen forty seven. Long ass time ago. No disrespect. But I think he knows it was a long ass time ago because he's been here. Um, like, can you imagine the transition from like official statements coming out via newspaper, mm-hmm. magazine, press, press releases, press releases, 
online, but online via a, a major publication, right? Radio, right? Forget before all that. Radio. Mm-hmm. Somebody make an announcement for your radio. Now people are dropping <laughs> press Official. releases yep. on the uh, posting notes app screenshots on Instagram. Yep. Fascinating. It's just wild to me. Um, but anyways. So I, should I read? I'll just read the whole thing. And, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll, put the, I'll put the screenshots up on the, on the screen. These last few days have been gut-wrenching. Gut-wrenchingly difficult and overwhelmingly disappointing. My work ethic, morals, and respectfulness have been questioned. My character has been criticized. Usually, I choose not to respond to false allegations, but these are as unbelievable as they sound and too outrageous to not be addressed. These sensationalized... Sensationalized. Shout out to Mark. Sensationalized stories are coming from former employees who have already publicly admitted that they were told their behavior on tour was inappropriate and unprofessional. Damn, I just lost the, lost the link. Mm. Um, as an artist, I have always been very passionate about what I do. I take my music and my performances seriously because at the end of the day, I only want to put out the best art that represents me and my fans. With passion comes hard work and high standards. Sometimes I have to make hard decisions, but it's never my intention to make anyone feel uncomfortable or like they aren't valued as an important part of the team. I'm not here to be looked at as a victim, but I also know that I'm not the villain that people in the media have portrayed me to be these last few days. I'm very open with my sexuality. I'm expressing myself, but I cannot accept or allow people to use that openness to make me out to be something I am not. There is nothing I take more seriously than the respect we deserve as women in the world. I know what it feels like to be body shamed on a daily basis and would absolutely never criticize or terminate an employee because of their weight. I'm hurt, but I will not let the good work I've done in the world be overshadowed by this. I want to thank everyone who has reached out and support to lift me up during this difficult time. So... You know, time will tell mm-hmm. what happens. If I had to guess, if this if this lawsuit moves forward, he's going to probably settle, settle out of court. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? For a certain amount, I would I would assume. Mm-hmm. What's interesting is that uh, apparently, allegedly, I was listening to NPR. Yeah, see, I knew that was going to be a reaction. I was listening to NPR. And, is it because uh, I have it on in your car? Absolutely. <laughs> but I was listening to it, and uh, they were talking about about this this uh this Lizzo situation and they said allegedly because you know Beyonce is on tour they said there's a song that has mm-hmm. Lizzo's name in the lyrics and she just happened to omit it after this news dropped oh. Queen B think about the thing about Beyonce she not gonna mess with her coin not gonna mess up you're not gonna mess up the bag she 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 Mm-mm. Not, not gonna, gonna do, do it, it. Not gonna do um it. you are correct she did i don't know what song it is because i'm not current with beyonce i wasn't you know i gotta be honest with you wasn't feeling the latest album i didn't even try to feel it wasn't feeling it. i didn't even like brush but, up against but it. it's beyonce so I, um, I'm, I'm sure it was fire yeah i mean even if it wasn't fire um people will make I'm sure it. i'm sure i'm the problem <laughs> okay taylor swift it's you i just don't want i don't no want nobody, i don't want nobody coming after um, me um i've had circling back i've had like this weird thing because obviously Beyonce's coming to Charlotte and Jeez. I've never seen Beyonce in concert nope. but I'm not like a diehard Beyonce fan like my little cousin went to two of her concerts Instagram told me yeah which is overkill for me but okay um, you, got, you got the bread when you're young wild and free do it so part of me there's like a part of me that's like I should go see Beyonce I should want to go see Beyonce I cannot afford to have the FOMO of not seeing Beyonce and then there's another part of me that's like I'm not that dedicated to Beyonce to go see Beyonce. Um, I have no qualms with Beyonce, so don't come for me talking about Jessica don't like Beyonce. I am cool with Beyonce. Beyonce can get it over there, you know, with the nepotism, got Blue Ivy, just the last outfit she had Blue Ivy wearing, though, I wasn't a fan. Like, she was in, like, a ski jacket on stage. Poor thing. Anyway. um, It's called fashion. I didn't see it, but I can't speak to yeah, it. But yeah, I was not a fan. Sure, if Beyonce signed off on it. it was I don't think spe- she did. It was spectacular. I don't think she did. Um, but yeah, Beyonce is not gonna mess with her coin. Beyonce is not gonna get in no controversy. Beyonce is not gonna give no opinions. Well, not I mean, not not of her own. Not unless it's of her own creation. That's true. That's true. But like she she's very neutral. Beyonce is very neutral when it comes to like perception how you perceive her i mean the woman barely does interviews she is very much so like 
I'm just going on my own straight and narrow. I'm not going to get caught up in anybody's mess. So yeah. I don't know the song that Lizzo Lyric is in, but yeah, she omitted it. And, and I don't know that anyone really cares. I think it's more like, I'm sure Lizzo's people care, Lizzo and her people that she has left care. Um, but yeah, I've heard Lizzo is toxic. Um, Liz, yeah, there was allegedly some documentary that she was part of and the producer or the 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 recorder person the person who was filming it um director maybe uh withdrew said like she had a a, a reaction a gut reaction that said you need to get away from this project mm. um as quickly and as far as possible and within days like left so i don't i don't dispute the idea that lizzo is probably a toxic individual in some capacity um we're all toxic in some some capacity i don't condone body shaming i don't bruh just be for yourself bruh, you <laughs> are, oh my gosh <laughs> ain't no we toxicity this. i ain't feel no like toxicity. This ain't no toxicity in every over here. episode you are literally ain't, chernobyl ain't no toxicity um, over here sis sis yeah Anyway. Right now, you sis. Anyway, you're talking um, all that nonsense. Anyway, can I speak? See, you're being toxic right you're now. Being toxic. Um, you came so for me. Everybody has their own degree of toxicity, and I know Lizzo has a degree my, of toxicity. My degree is zero. Um, so I'm not surprised. I'm disappointed, but I also know at this point next week I'm not going to care unless like more comes out that she's forcing people to do stuff but i mean people have accused beyonce of doing stuff like she has one former backup dancer who was like oh, or drummer who was like she makes us like worship the devil or something like that like ridiculous stuff i don't know if it's true or not um but it's extreme the industry is complex and again, i'm sorry did you know they're doing like an old bachelor yeah the golden bachelor so they've they've and I'm gonna watch. They've run out of. I don't like his voice. They've run out of ideas. No, they have. We've, I don't we've, like we've his jump, voice. We've jumped um, the shark at this point. He, I was really expecting like a Pierce brought like a deeper voice, and he does not. He has like a very high pitched voice for an older man, and it kind of bothers me. But that's neither here nor there. Um, but yeah, I'm not. I'm not surprised at the toxicity. Disappointed, not surprised. I feel like that's just part of it. Um, that's just kind of how the industry goes. There are some people who are just will have a reputation for being great and then there are some people who have reputations for being difficult mm. and i feel like you know lizzo is not someone i would have assumed falls into that but i'm not surprised either but very little surprises me um yeah in, in with celebrities and pop culture and all of that do i think lizzo's gonna get canceled no i don't to your point i think they're gonna settle out of court i think she'll do some therapy some self-help you know, I'm going to do what I need to do to get through this season. She's going to come out with like an instrumental flute album, twerk and blow, whatever we're going to call it. And, you know, we're going to move on and we're going to have our next hits. Like, that's just how the cycle is. Yeah. 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 You got anything other than you? I, I don't have a hard time believing anything <laughs> these days. Mm -hmm. I think very few things should be dismissed immediately and com like rejected. I like I just feel like very few things because there's usually an element of truth in most most mm -hmm. things like this that come out right um i think one thing we c can all afford to do just like the jonathan major situation just wait mm -hmm. we have our initial reactions you know people are gonna come out they're gonna make these statements I say, did yeah. he ever make a statement no i'm not necessarily the the defendants mm -hmm. i'm just saying people in general people involved people who you know maybe see opportunity or people who've been affected by individuals they will come out that make the same it's like the former director or creative person said you know she pulled out because mm -hmm. she just felt toxicity or whatever obviously there's the defendants or a number of defendants who have you know um claimed that lizzo is 
did X, Y, and Z. And Lizzo was just somewhat stated her side of the of the uh, of the story. So kind of just have to wait and see how it plays out. But like you, is it unthinkable that a entertainer, highly successful entertainer, uh, could possibly have a work environment that breeds toxicity? No, because we've seen it before. Mm -hmm. Is it odd that someone who's big on body positivity would be accused of body shaming? Kind of. It's like, hmm. Like, dang. Hate to think of Lizzo's a hypocrite. But I, w- I wouldn't put it past anybody. Mm-mm. So uh, it's unfortunate. Um, if, if at the very least, if none of this is true, you know, it's kind of affected Lizzo here, at least in the short term. But if it is true, it's unfortunate that people potentially had to work under such conditions. Mm-hmm. Um, and hopefully, if if it, if it is true, Lizzo can sort of reckon with that and take an honest look at how she runs things and how she treats people on her staff, people who work for her. Because it's a big responsibility when you're big like that and you're employing people. So you want to make sure that their work environment is yeah. safe and people feel involved and they feel respected um and they don't feel shamed so it's uh yeah it's unfortunate that um all this has happened but it just seemed like it just came out of nowhere but then it just kind of blew up and then everybody was saying something like, oh, yeah, well, you know, I did. I had had this interaction with Lizzo mm-hmm. or Lizzo. Maybe for this, like, God damn, like, where are these people coming from? But we'll see. See, we shall. Speaking of dropping things, um, you know, like, you know, people, you know, people like dropping weight. Um, you should drop weight. Speaking of dropping things. As you start to say in the beginning of the episode. You know, people, when they make statements that kind of win them an argument or are very profound, you know, people say they drop the mic. Well, not only did Cardi B drop the mic, she launched them off. <laughs> um, I don't know if, if y'all saw this. I'm sure everybody's seen this. Cardi B, right? Like, Cardi, like, yeah, do you not know what's going on with Cardi B? Um, did you catch that? You did. You caught it. Uh, so she was in Vegas. It's hot. Newsflash, okay. right? <laughs> it's newsflash. It's hot in Vegas. It's she was in Vegas performing. She had stopped to tell people that they need to throw water on her because it's hot. She needs to be cooled off. Um, oh, oh, she said that? She said it. That's what people don't. That's what people because you know when the clip starts, it just starts with Cardi performing, and then some ra- person just randomly throws a drink at her, right? <laughs> and Cardi chucks the know. chucks the mic at her. But um, yeah, shortly before that, she had been like, I don't know if she was joking. I don't know if she was being serious. But clearly, the moment had passed <laughs> for Cardi. The window had of opportunity had passed. Uh, and somebody splashed her with some water, and Cardi threw the mic through a microphone at the person. I think it hit the person that she was intending and it bounced and it hit another person. <gasps> that person was thinking of like pressing charges. Uh, it came out today that there aren't going to be any, there aren't going to be any charges. Um, just a lot of stuff happening with entertainers lately on stage. It's entertainers like somebody threw wild. Somebody threw something, a phone at somebody, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, What? One of your kids' limbs that's out of the bed. As long as we're not awake. Um, yeah. I mean, it's always been, you've got to be brave. You've always needed to be brave to be an entertainer, to mm-hmm. go out in front of people, a crowd of people, and perform. Mm-hmm. Put um, yourself out there. Yeah. But now you gotta, you got to... Bob and weave. I gotta be able to like be like a receiver going across the middle. You gotta you gotta be have your head on a swivel. 
It's crazy. But, I mean, it was just water, number one. So this changes my whole... Because I was prepared to oh, talk you didn't about know. this. I was prepared to talk about this. I didn't know... Sh- I, the way I get exposed to what's happening is like short clips on Instagram with no sound because I don't listen to things. I don't watch things with sound. It takes a lot for me to go through the effort of turning the volume on to hear audio in Instagram. So, and I'm not a TikToker. So I didn't realize that she at one point said people should throw water on her. So I was going to come up in here and defend her like this is self-defense. Someone just threw a liquid at him at her and she reacted because you know, I had to think about like when you're you've never done it obviously, but when you're nursing a baby, at some point the baby has teeth. And they either get lost in thought or just to get your attention, whatever reason, they bite you. And all three of my kids have done this at one point. And I've had the same reaction where I smacked each of them on the face. But it wasn't a matter of hmm. I'm I'm doing this out of malice. I believe, I believe that's called battery. <laughs> <laughs> I, believe it wasn't this. A, I mean, I didn't like slap them, but it's like believe your, you can be your, arrested for your that instinct is to like oh i've been attacked self-defense so you know you, against a, a baby have you been bit by baby teeth self-defense against in one a baby. of your most sensitive areas of the body so you'll be just slapping babies <laughs> i, <laughs> I we, can admit that i have smacked we just out here just guys just slapping babies wow all three kids just because it's it's in, an instinctive response wow. ow you just bit my nipple so i, I you um wow. so i was coming here to defend cardi like yeah. someone just threw something at her her reaction was to like the first weapon she had she didn't know what was being thrown is it liquid anthrax like what is it now that i have con- and this is why context is so important ice water now that i have context and realize that at one point she instructed people to cool her down i have i have nothing to stand on i'm sorry yeah so a couple of things um, I was reading a, a People magazine's uh, write up on this. Um, Cardi, the I Like It hitmaker, who is married to rapper Offset, which is, I don't know why they put that, but I guess it's an SEO thing, uh, was performing at a nightclub last Saturday when she requested her fans cool her down by splashing her with water in an attempt to beat the Las Vegas heat. However, when one audience member responded by dousing the rapper with not just liquid, but also ice, she lashed out by throwing the microphone directly at the alleged liquid launcher. Amazing alliteration. Uh, The mic then ricocheted and hit a female bystander (laughs) who filed a police report claiming she wasn't the one who launched the melting missiles at Cardi. Yo, whoever wrote this is fantastic. Um... According to NBC, the woman told local law enforcement that she got hit by the microphone on the right shoulder and is now, quote unquote, experiencing pain because of the incident and is going to go get medical attention after she returns home on uh, because this all happened last week. Uh, While the mother of two was listed as a battery suspect, the case was never referred to the Clark County District Attorney's Office and the cops concluded Cardi did not commit a criminal offense. As for the infamous microphone that Cardi threw at the crowd, it's now up for auction on eBay <laughs> with bids so far eclipsing $90,000. eBay's still an active website? Yeah, I get eBay alerts every night. You never know I when bought, you... I bought my senior prom dress on eBay. Yeah. It's I've, a $700 dress. I got it for a lot of my, bucks. Um, when I was, when I was deep in the game. Okay. I had, I had, to, I had to fight my way out. What game? The game. The game of what? You know, the type of game that you normally they don't just let people walk away from. But I, I got out the life. When I was buying tech. <laughs> I was buying cell phones and tablets. A lot of my purchases and... I, mean, and I think like a like two a decade and a half ago, I bought a phone off of eBay. Bro, I used to be slinging stuff on eBay. Religiously. Mm buy some use it for a couple months yeah. put it on ebay buy something else and where did that get to you hmm? and where did that get to you where did that bring me <laughs> with a folder phone where did that bring eBay's me it's turning into my space because i don't even use ebay like that um i mean it's, it's still there 
I thought about People using it. Buy cars from eBay. Yeah, I would never do that. Um, you go to Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, the Cardi thing is is funny. Like, because it's. <laughs> It's just amazing. Like, Shorty really tried to press charges because yeah. the mic ricocheted. She has pain in her shoulder. I mean, I'm not, I'm not mad at the hustle. I mean, get your coins. It's, in, you know, it's, a, it's almost a recession. I'm sure here. she got something for it. It's almost a recession. Or maybe a visit. She ain't get nothing. She got a visit. Nah. Not from Cardi. But she probably got a visit from somebody. She she dropped, him, dropped him charges. Cardi's cutthroat. You saw what she did to that blogger who was. Um, Yo, she. That's I why mean, I'm not the saying. Blogger set herself up. That's why I'm not saying nothing negative about her. The car, shit. The, she set herself. But she ain't like, about to come. Cardi ain't about to come get my house in, nah. in Acreage. She, she a thug. Nah, she ain't gonna um, have it. I love Cardi. Cardi, my favorite artist. I mean, can't she, tell you a song, but just know that she's my favorite artist. I, I got like nothing her, negative to say about Cardi. I, I, I feel like my relationship okay. with Cardi B is essentially that clip of Denzel Washington impersonating her. <laughs> I love her. That is <laughs> he embodies my uh, my f- feelings towards Cardi B. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that Denzel Washington knows Cardi B caught but Jamie, didn't caught know Jamie completely but didn't guard. know Damson Idris is isn't that amazing? Ridiculous. No, you know, and sometimes this, this is this is one like if I ever meet Denzel, this is the one beef I have with him. I know he knows who these people are. This just it's uh, it's a bit. It's got to be like, come on, Denzel. Yo, he played dancing so, hard. and he called him like, dancing. He's like, who who dancing? Like, like, man, you know who that boy is. You know twice. who that man is. Yeah, Denzel was dirty for that. Um, but apparently, they met at a Lakers game. <laughs> Damson walked up to him, and at that point. Denzel knew who he was, so they. They uh, yeah, they about to play father and son and some. Yeah, you know the last Equalizer is about to come out. The last. For for Denzel. They gonna bring Queen Latifah into the next one. God, I hope not. I gotta watch the show. I think one of your parents watches the actual show. Yeah, I think my dad watches it. He watches some random stuff. He does. He's a he's a CBS. He is. For some it's reason, so, all his shows are on CBS. It's so hard for me to CBS. Yeah. Every once in a while, I can go to NBC, but like I'm an ABC girl. I'm the, I got no allegiance. It's just CBS. It's usually just be dry. The only CBS show I ever really watched was a uh, Person of Interest. I only watched for a couple seasons. Fox um, usually isn't bad. I mean, Fox ABC. Is... Only two shows I've ever watched that I that I will go to war for. Boss. And Twenty Four. But Twenty Four is on Fox. Exactly. So Fox and, and ABC gave me both those shows, but I feel like otherwise I have no allegiance. Fox, is, like with their black entertainment, it's like it always just teeters something that Tyler Perry, for some reason, chose not to produce. We don't gotta we don't gotta frame everything against what Tyler Perry's I mean, made or what I Tyler mean, Perry would make it, every, every, just because it's a black I, production. I'm just saying with their black productions, it's always like. This is two steps above some a Tyler true. Perry production. This is not um, true. I still need to go watch that jazz player movie that he had on Netflix um, that I just never got around to. Um, yeah, it's not true. I love me some Tyler Perry. He's oh, great. I, I got no beef with Tyler Perry. I don't have beef with him either. He got the studio. But we don't got to compare every... His work is just very specific. You know, you know who the black creators that we do need to support the ones on Tubi no <laughs> yeah do you see the I'll be sending I know I'll be sending stuff. you gotta look you gotta watch no. the clips cause I'm in like this black entertainment Facebook group Just. and the pictures that I see for Tubi stuff I'm like there's no way ain't no way I'm gonna watch this they'll you show know, like we, the same scene like somebody <laughs> in a hospital bed and like at minute 10 <laughs> 14 it's one guy and then at minute 10 56 is a completely different actor different complexion different hairstyle <laughs> but it's supposed to be the exact same scene i can't do that hey, yo, there was one i put there's one i put in the group chat um are you crying <laughs> it, was, it was it was it was special um 
I'll show it to you. I, I, I won't put it up here, but I'm, it, I it's, thought about there watching people, Tubi, but there, I just can't do it. No, there's actually like really solid like independent films on there, um, but they're like a dime a dozen. Um, I mean, they're like a diamond in the rough. Uh, it's Tubi is a. Uh, <laughs> it's it's it's, tough. it's it's like people say I can't believe Twitter is free just because of the amount of <laughs> comedy that's on there. Like I, there are times I can't I can and can't believe Tubi. So is you free. got BT, Tubi, and TV One. How are you rank? How do you rank? Do you watch Tubi? I don't watch any of them. <laughs> To be honest with you, which is horrible, I guess. Well, I'm annoyed with BET. But I don't watch, I don't watch TV, because though. Because all the good shows that BET seems to have are on BET+. BET Plus. I'm like, don't we, don't we get that? No. Did I sign us up for it? I don't think so. Oh, it's a subscription. Yeah, it's like five ninety nine a month. And I'm like, y'all haven't even built my loyalty get, on the free stuff. I'll and just, there's a show that actually looks interesting on TV1. I got a clip of it. I think I got the first episode after the BET Awards. It's got that comedian. I don't know if his name is Dion or something. Um, but he plays a serious character. Like his father gets murdered and he has to take on the family business. And the first episode was actually very engaging. Um, but I was like, am I dedicated enough to pay five ninety nine dollars to Mark, watch it? I think Mark has it. We just get the login. I might have to do that. If it if it, if he'll give it to us, Mark, you get your shout out. We just need to log in to BET Plus. We'll do a review, Appreciate but yeah, it. that's the only thing about BET because it's like the regular network channel has crap on it. It's like the same movie cycling over and over again. Soul Food, like how many times are we gonna watch Soul Food? Um, but all the good content, I've never watched Soul Food. All so the then, so then they they keep playing it in hopes that you actually watch it. <laughs> all the good content that they they put out seems to be on BET Plus. Um, I always just skip uh, TV One because I still don't know what its intentions are. You skip? Do we get TV One? When we had the where antenna, do you where are you watching TV One? Because Bounce turned into TV. Is Bounce still a network or is Bounce now TV One? Because it's the same channel. Unless they like split the network and it's like bounce from twelve a.m. I don't to, watch TV, so I can't tell you. Anyway, um, we have TV One on one of the TVs. I've seen it. <laughs> I've passed it okay. um, by accident, but yeah. I watch um, I watch YouTube, and then you've got Tubi, and I watch NBA, and then I watch like random shows on like Apple TV Plus or. Speaking of random shows, y'all, we just wrapped up Hijack. And I don't know. I don't know who we should go into. I'm pissed. Because it's it just came out yesterday, so we don't want to spoil it for anybody. Maybe we'll touch on it next week. I'm pissed. But you know what I realize? They're likely to have a season two a lot sooner because it's an English show. So English writers are not on, on strike. I don't see how you could have... I don't see how there could be... I think it's a limited series. Don't say stuff like that. You gotta rip the band-aid off. I think it's limited. No. I, I, I don't know. I, I would assume... The way they they did it i would assume it's a limited series no there's more to it because the way it ended there's a part of me that thinks idris's character like there's more to it like he's he's in he's part of it um i'm pretty sure it's a limited series when they come out with season two i'm not gonna let you watch it no, we'll pull it up and then we'll, then we'll close it up because we're at an hour and 18 minutes oh that was actually a longer hour and 18 minutes than i expected Um, if you have the time and you need a good binge, now all the episodes are out. I made the mistake of, I was watching it for me. I didn't know David was going to be interested in it because I love English TV um, and English entertainment. So I was watching it for me. David happened to be on the couch. I expect him to fall asleep because he can't stay awake. Um, but I guess he got into it. And then we got through like two or three episodes. Four. We got through four episodes. And I didn't know how far into the season the show was. I just knew I had seen the name of it, so I was like, I'm gonna watch it. And it stopped. And <laughs> I thought he was gonna leave. I I don't know that I've ever seen his. He was like, this is an abomination. Don't you know the rules? You are not supposed to start a show if it's not finished. I was like, homie. And then ever since then, he has been pushing. He's like, there's a new episode of Hijack. There's a new episode of Hijack. We gotta go watch it, so. So what's next? Well, first of all, 
Apple TV Plus has billed Hijack as a limited series. So there's technically no hope for a second season. But just via Esquire magazine. But you can unbill it. <laughs> All right. So um <laughs> you can you can catch us on uh YouTube. I, I think because here where, where you're watching because us. Because of NACTA NAFTA and <laughs> NAFTA. Uh, audio and the audio version is no, on I'm uh, still speaking. Audio version is um, on Apple and Spotify. Because of NAFTA and SAG, I think they might take advantage of this show that's already done numbers. They've got writers available. Demetra's in London. She can join the writers' can't, room. If, you, if they're part of the, 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 the union, they can't write. Can you be part of a union internationally? Um. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um. I I, I don't know, but Apple. I don't think Apple Apple is going to produce it because they're. Mm. I wonder what the. English version Actually, of Apple I don't even know is. If Apple, it's on Apple TV Plus, but they may not even have produced yeah, it. Yeah, there's possibility. They may have just bought the rights. Um, there's hope. So hopefully, uh, this was kind of a, a random episode. No, no real relationship topics. Although we talked on marriage and kids and a little bit, or parenting, excuse me, mm-hmm. a little bit. But uh, yeah, that's it for this week. Got an hour and twenty one minutes, so we'll try to wrap this up pretty quick. Um, shout out to our new subscribers. Thanks to everybody who jumps into the comments. Sorry we were off last week. Sorry we didn't let you know till the last minute. Stuff happens. We got three kids, full time jobs. Some of us work like one full time job that seems like two full time jobs. So uh, sometimes and I've had full, two full time jobs before. Sometimes these things happen. But um, we're back. Um, we're in the new studio, kind of. We're uh. Still trying to figure out the layout, but um, I, I miss the I miss the arms. I really do. I don't. I miss I miss the arms. I, I I don't I don't like this. I feel, feel like I got control over the mic like I did with the arms. But anyway, we'll be back next week, right? Allegedly. I think we'll be back next week. We'll be back next week. So till then, what do you usually say? Rush the vibe. How you say it? What do you say? How we close? Sure to rush the vibe, but no, that's at the beginning. You didn't say it this time. You switching it up? I'm trying to. New spot, new new intro. Switch up the tempo. Okay, cool. Um yeah. we're out. Bye. And we'll be back yeah. next week. Yeah. Hey, hey. I done came way too fucking stop me now. I done came way too fucking stop me now. I done came way too fucking stop me now. I done came way too fucking stop me now. Stop me now.